Hey guys, I'm a fish guy here. I know it's been a while, uh, but I'm doing a care sheet video on the clown pet pleco or the candy stripe pleco or the candy pleco, tiger pleco, uh, whatever you prefer to call it. Uh, there's tons and tons of different names out there, but what I like about these guys is they're not the giants that you're going to see in normal pet stores. These guys are roughly about four to five inches max. You might see some a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. It's just like any other fish in this hobby. There are exceptions to all the rules. So, but what I like about these guys, they live about six to eight years. So that's pretty decent for a fish. Uh, it definitely isn't as long as some of your other common plecos out there. I've had some of those about 15 to 18 years. Uh, so it's quite a investment and quite a uh, kind of fish to take on that you're going to take it for its whole life. Uh, I've had a lot of these guys given to me. I've donated them, given them to people with bigger tanks. Uh, so, you know, that's why I like these smaller plecos. So, these plecos, they're pretty hardy. pH is anywhere from 6.2 to 8.2. They're really not too picky about that, which is really, really nice because water fluctuations of pH are so broad in the U.S. Uh, and even across seas and everything like that. I know my water depending on the time of day, 7.8, 8.0. Uh, I know when I lived in New York, it was a little bit lower. It was still pretty high, but then I talked to people out south, and you guys are struggling to get 7.0 for some of your pH. So this Pleco is perfect for all these different situations, which is another reason why I really like them. Another thing, minimum tank size, I would say probably about 30 gallon, because like I said, they're only gonna get four to five inches roughly. Uh, so a 30 gallon is definitely pretty ideal for these guys. It gives them enough room to swim around, enough area to kind of, you know, protect as their own because sometimes they do protect the substrate and their food source. So you want to keep that in mind. They're pretty docile when it comes to a pleco, uh, but just like any fish, if their food source is threatened, of course they're going to take matters into their own hands. Another thing, these guys are a wood eater. Now, I know a lot of people are like, well, what the heck's a wood eater? I bought this to get algae. They may scrape some of the algae off the wood that you have, but that's why I recommend driftwood for these guys because if you don't have driftwood, you're going to have some problems. Now, these guys don't actually eat wood. So what it is basically is they're going to be scraping the decaying wood already that is decaying on the piece of driftwood or root system, anything like that, and they're going to basically uh, extract the nutrients and basically ingest the microorganisms that are breaking down the wood. Now they don't really have a bacteria in their stomach that's going to break down wood. Uh, so the term wood eater can kind of be a little misleading, uh, if, especially if you don't understand the full terminology of it uh, and what they really mean by it. So this brings me to my other point. They will eat algae, but like I said, they're going to scrape it off. So you want to make sure if you do have a planted tank, you want to make sure that these leaves are a little bit thicker uh, that's why I loved them because my Amazon sword plant, it's a thicker leaf plant. If you have a thin leaf plant, if they're trying to munch that algae off and they're used to basically scraping it off the wood, they may do some heavy damage to your leaves without you really even noticing it. And then you're going to be really, really peed off because it's going to rip all your, your leaves apart or they're going to look really, really thin almost to the point where you can see right through them. And as a plant aquarium person, you really don't want to see that. Uh, especially when you're trying to find something that's a little bit more plant friendly and it's going to be, you know, taking care of some of the algae problems you may have on the glass or the rocks or any kind of drift foot. So that's definitely a key thing you want to keep in mind. Next with these guys, you want to make sure you're feeding them a vegetable matter, whether it's the, um, you know, sinking wafers for algae wafers. You can do boiled uh, zucchini, cucumber, uh, sweet potato. Pretty much anything like that. You can do some like romaine lettuce you can also put down there as well. Uh, the best way, and a lot of people are like, well, you know, how do I get the, uh, you know, the zucchini and cucumber to stay down there? Honestly, just take a clean fork, stab it, and drop it in the tank, and it sinks right down. As long as there's no heavy detergents on the fork or anything like that, you're not going to have a problem. And that fork is going to weigh it down and pretty much stand straight up. So if you need to get it out, you can pull it straight out without having to dig your hand all the way to the bottom of the aquarium. So that's another reason why I like these guys because they have such a wide variety of diet. 
And there's actually some uh, new algae wafers I just saw out on the market. I believe it's by Tetra. Uh, they actually have traces of uh, zucchini in them. So it's going to be more of a natural, more good stuff in the algae wafers. Uh, they may not be the perfect diet requirement. Uh, you may need to, you know, put some fresh stuff in there to kind of help, you know, encourage their diet and encourage their health and well-being. Uh, but definitely the way to go if you are looking at algae wafers, a new one, it's like I said, I believe it's by Tetra and it has zucchini traces in it. So let's recap this. Four to five inches on these guys, six to eight years roughly in a lifespan, 72 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit for temperature. Uh, like I said, I always kept mine at 76, 77, never had a problem. 30 gallon minimum, these guys are a wood eater. Remember, they don't eat the wood, they scrape off basically the decaying stuff on the wood. So keep that in mind. Feed them zucchini, cucumbers. Make sure to have that driftwood in there. These guys in their natural environment, they live in like a rooted system. So they need that you know, security of the roots, the driftwood, anything like that. So keep that in mind. Also, for all you planted aquarium guys out there, thick leaf plants. These guys will, not meaning to, but chew on some of the plants, and if they're not able to handle it, there's gonna be a problem. So, remember, check out that product. Like I said, I believe it's by Tetra. I'll put a link down below so you can check it out, uh, and if you want to, buy it. So, thank you for watching. Uh, it's good to be back. Check out my website, mafishguide.com. Remember, hashtag make a wave. Details will be coming soon on that. And uh, also trying out a new selfie stick, and I'll have uh, some updates on the fish room. Not what you guys probably want to see, uh, but things will hopefully start ramping back. So stay tuned for more, and uh, I'm out.